All right, welcome today. All right, so today we're at our audit finance. Um, like I said, it's going to be a little bit longer than usual. I encourage the board to be comfortable. I don't want to be acting the time. Um, I want to move this over to uh, Lyndon now to talk about our financial reports ending October 31st. Linda. So, as of October 31st, our operating our operating gain is at 5.7 million. Uh, expenses are about they're on budget and about 50 percent, 51 percent over prior year at this time. You know, even though yeah, 50 percent over prior year that was a pandemic year we are actually 34 percent still under the pre-pandemic year expenses however are pretty much in line um, with budget and prior year but again we are comparing to a pre-pandemic year the more interesting story is the graphs that are in the board report if you look at the monthly operating revenue chart as you can see the green year is the pandemic year or the green line and the blue line is the current year that's more of a uh, story because it's the the trending about the same however we're still 34 percent under prior year in our operating revenue same with the non-operating revenue those those lines are very much similar they're trending very similar to the pre-pandemic year more so than the pandemic year and without our operating or non-operating revenues the federal assistance um, we, would, we would be facing deficits in this current year expenses however as you can see comparing to the pre-pandemic year we are trending very much the same so again it's the federal funding that's keeping us afloat so if there's not any questions about the november statement or the october statement i will move right into our budget any questions so uh, with that being said, I need a motion to bring the uh, uh, financial reports on in October to the full board for approval. Darlene, second. Tina, all in favor? Aye. Uh, moving on now to the operating budget. Okay, so first I, I'd like to just take a couple minutes to thank my finance team for the work they've done right on the budget. As you know, we start with a, a zero-based budget. We have a zero-based budget approach. Uh, it takes the entire finance team and all of our department heads to create this budget. And we meet with department heads. We, we discuss trends in the current year, prior years, you know, what their operating needs are for the, the year, for projects, for contracts, and we develop a budget. And then. Once we know what the expenses are going to be, then we're filling it in with whatever budgeted revenues we have of our own, and then finally with the subsidies. And then all of this has to be brought to you, the board, to review in November so that we can enter it into the PARA system by December 31st. And PARA is the Public Authority Reporting Information System for all of you to know. So, uh, and my finance team, I have to give them credit. It's uh, Melissa Brim, unfortunately, she's out sick today and wasn't able to be here. Uh, we had a very new team this year. Um, Mike Simioli has been with us for about six years. He's our senior accountant. Um, one of our newest uh, employees is Len Suits, who is, couldn't be here today either because he's busy training on our new payroll person. So, but he has also only been here a year, recently promoted to senior accountant. And he did a very good job in his first budget year. Not only was he doing that, his regular job, but he was also doing our payroll. So we got to give him a lot of credit. And we also have on the capital side, Terrence Craker and EJ Moses and uh, Jeannie Barankovich, our revenue collection manager. So thank you all for all your hard work to do on the budget. So here is our consolidated um, budget. This is just a real summary, breaking out the revenue and expenses. Um, as you can see, there's about a 3% change from the prior budget in revenues and a 3% change in expenses because we're bringing you a balanced budget. Um, <clears throat> the detailed budget, here our operating budget. Take my time. Just a few. So 
So our expenses, operating revenue, overall is an 8% increase over prior year. Regular line revenues were budgeted a 9% increase. That's a modest change. Um, basically, our ridership has not returned to pre-pandemic levels, so we we're budgeting very conservatively there. Um, <clears throat> this is still about a 46 decrease compared to the pre-pandemic levels. Um, the advertising and other revenue line, 27% increase, and that's due to contractual advertising revenues. Expenses, our salaries and wages, there's a modest 2% increase. This takes into account that we are fully staffed, but there's also been some changes in staffing with, um, with the shortages. We have a lot of new hires that are coming in at a lower uh, wage than some of the employees that have left. Other employee benefit, sorry. Come on. Other employee benefits and payroll taxes are about 5% over the prior year budget. That's just an increase compared just due to the changes in the salaries. <coughs> Healthcare benefits, a 7% increase. This is going by the current trend, and that's pretty consistent with prior years. Workers' compensation, there was a 22% decrease, and that's basically due to the fact that our program has been improving from our uh, programs. Pension benefits, there's about a 35% decrease. That's just due to the changes in our actuarial assumptions. Risk management. There's about a 9% increase. That's due to the trends in the, in the market right now with increases to the liability insurance premiums, and that's consistent with the industry. Linda, can I ask a quick question? Mm -hmm. Just, um, you said working compensation was a 22% decrease? No, I I'm sorry, 22% increase. Increased. Okay. okay, that's what yeah, I yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, and that's due to people being going, having the ability to go yes, back. Yes, no, I just okay. Them. Yes, thank you. Uh, purchase transportation, there's about a 17% increase. That's due to the fact that our ridership in this area has come back faster than our fixed route service. And also due to some contractual increases as well to the cost per hour. Uh, materials and supplies, our services and fuel, all those lines have been increased due to inflation right now. Um, we're seeing increases due to, um, you know, the logistics problems getting um, materials and supplies has increased the costs. Um, fuel, we are locked in at, with our cross uh, national gas. Some of these increases are just due to increases in gas and diesel. Um, so that was overall a 3% increase in our operating expenses for the fiscal year 23 budget. The uh, <clears throat> non-operating revenue, there was 11% decrease in the federal assistance and that's just due to the increase in the state assistance and local assistance, which was not included in our original budget for 22. This was something that happened after the final budget. So that's why you see an increase in the state and local assistance as well. And we did a modest increase in the mortgage tax revenue, although we've been having great years for the last two years. I try to keep it conservative. And we do not know what the next year will be for this for the market. So overall, we've balanced our budget for fiscal year 22. Are there any questions, or I'm sorry, fiscal year 23. Any questions on any of these line items? Glad to see that you finished your budget. Yeah. That's, <laughs> This is the second year in a row we've been able to do that, but only due to the fact that we have federal funding. Normally, we are usually using reserves or have deficits. So there's no other questions on this. I'm gonna move into our This 
is our three-year, multi-year budget projections. I'm going to actually switch over to a different spreadsheet to give you a detail of this. <laughs> Sorry about the, how this looks on the screen. It's page 20 in the book if everybody's wants Thank to follow you. along. <laughs> for the audience, I apologize, but this is about the best I can do for this. So for fiscal year 23, you've seen that balanced budget. That was about a 3% overall increase from the prior year's budget. For the next three years, um, the first year we, we can present another balanced budget using the rest of our federal funding. When we get into fiscal year 25 and fiscal year 26, you can see that we are begin facing deficits again. Flip over to my federal assistance tag. So here's how we've been funding the uh, assistance, the federal assistance for the next three years. As you can see, in this fiscal year, we're using up the rest of our CURSA, and we are going to be tapping into the ARP funds. Then starting in fiscal year 23 and 24, we will use up the rest of the ARP funds. And we'll be beginning in fiscal year 24 using some of our conserve funds from pre-pandemic, which would be our 5307 operating assistance and our preventive maintenance. And starting in 25 and 26, that's when we will begin to start using our reserves in order to balance the budget. For the operating revenues, over the next three years, we're basically assuming that we won't go back to pre-pandemic levels until well into 26. Uh, special line revenues are, balance, are, are budgeted a modest 1% increase, and advertising and other is based on our current contracts. For the rest of the expenses, salaries and wages, we are budgeting at a 4% increase over year over year. Other employee benefits and payroll taxes, a 3% increase. Healthcare, keeping it at a flat 7%. Pension benefits, modest 4%. Okay. Workers comp, about 3%. Um, most of the rest of the lines are budgeted at about a 5% increase. This is much higher than prior years, but due to the state of the economy right now and inflation, a lot of these costs have gone up. These would normally be around the 3% range. And the pensions are funded quite well right now. Yes. Yep. They are all doing well. And we're, we're budgeting that based on actual assumptions as well. So. We kept the STOA flat, state operating assistance, year over year, and the same with the local assistance. And then the MRT, I kept that at a conservative uh, level as well and kept that flat over the three years. So, if there, are there any questions about our three year operating budget? Yes. Senator Schumer was here talking about the infrastructure money that it looks like we're going to get because it finally passed. That money is not operating, can't be used for operating, correct? correct. At, meaning it's here to buy buses and buildings and capitals. Yeah, and I was going to mention this in my report, and I still will. Um, it's important to note, too, that um, while the overall amount is $74 million, 55 of that was already part of our regular allocation. So what it really was was about a $19 million increase. And the other thing I think is important to note is um, you know, we can't just go in, click a button, and draw down $74 million. It's, it's spread out over f uh, five years. Um, so it's, it's, I mean, I understand that everybody wants to give the good news and say, hey, look, they got $75 million, but there's there's some strings attached. It's actually a rope. What's that? It's a rope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But the extra 19 is going to come in handy. Lastly, I'm going to just quickly go over our reserve statement. This has been updated with the budget numbers. As you can see, we have um, reserves through fiscal year 24, but we will be tapping into those reserves beginning in 25 and 26, and we'll again be facing deficits in 26 if we don't have funding, state funding returned to its levels pre-pandemic, as well as federal assistance. Any questions about the reserve statement? Okay, so that concludes what I have for the operating budget. Next, I'm going to turn.
turn this over to Tara Sprager for our capital budget. Okay, before we go, f uh, before we get into Tara, um, any other questions on the operating budget? Is there any reason to assume that state and federal wouldn't return pre pandemic loans? Um, you know, I think that's one of the things that we try to be conservative with, um, and it's nice when it does because then that's that much less in the federal or any of our reserve monies that we have to draw down. Um, but we typically get guidance from the Department of Budget to either budget, you know, two percent to stay within the tax cap or keep it flat. Gotcha. But then that's what myself and. Um, <coughs> The other CEOs up and down the throughway, we go to all of our delegation and, and we're lobbying them for. I mean, the ask has consistently been a 50% increase over five years. So we'd like to get an extra 10% every year for the next five. And we're more um, conservative budgeting on the, uh, of course, the revenue side. So, um, yeah, that was a good question, though. Hopefully, though, the ridership will at some point come back, you know. Some of that revenue that would be nice at some point. Who knows? Any other questions? Okay, I need a motion to bring this to full board for approval. Neil, motion. Second, Tina. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, very good. Moving on to the uh, capital budget. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So as you can see in our capital budget, the majority of the funding is going to go toward rolling stock or the purchase of buses. And in front of you is a summary of what we have budgeted by property. What I'm going to walk you through now is the detail that is within those lines um, in no particular order. It's page 24 if you're looking for it in your report. So here in the Syracuse location, I'm going to start with rolling stock. We have eight call buses that we are um, ordering. We have 18 CNG buses. We have eight diesel 40 foot buses. That is a carryover project from last fiscal year, delayed due to the pandemic. So you'll see it rolling forward into this coming fiscal year. And we also have MCI high back buses as well here in Syracuse, also a carryover project from last fiscal year. We're going to be paying with these with a mixture of funding, federal, state, and local. Some pieces you'll find are broken out. Um, the CNG buses in particular, they have state funds and federal funds assigned to them over a couple of different grants. We have a buildings and grounds truck in here as well. Um, for the facility, there's a bunch of projects that are mixed into this summary here. And first and foremost is the bus shelters we're going to purchase. We have 10 in the upcoming fiscal year, and we have 10 rolling over from last fiscal year. So you'll see that line's a little bit bigger than we normally budget for. The CNG station, we've changed that project up a little bit based on the RFP that was let and some updates we need to have done. So now you'll find in there electrical service installation that is going to upgrade the east side of the building to allow for um, electrical needs. We have HVO2 or heating and ventilation. That's a whole unit replacement that we have to do there. That's a big one. That project in itself is $500,000. The radiant heating project too, as well over there, also a $500,000 project. Both of those projects were looked at and found in a compliance review. We have combustible gas detectors in there. This is a carryover project as well. Engineering services throughout the organization, also in that line. We have some facility projects in here too that are fairly large. The boardroom renovation. We have window replacement. All windows throughout the Syracuse facility will be replaced and up to compliance. And we have the maintenance bathroom areas. Those are going to be renovated and updated. Replacement tank tops. All of these projects have slight details in this book as well, so if you want to dive into a further detail, they are listed. Um, the replacement tank tops is a carryover from last fiscal year. We have Syracuse paving. That is going to pave this entire facility. All parking lots and drive lanes will be done here. Trench drain repair and replacement, also a carryover from last fiscal year. And then on the administration side, we have lines for computer equipment and computer software. 
Do you guys have any questions for the Syracuse facility? You, you mentioned that you're going to be purchasing bus shelters. Yes. Have you decided where you're going to put them? Put them? There's a whole list. I can email you actually the locations to where each of those shelters were projected in the grant to go, okay. if you'd like that. And those are all that means Syracuse? Correct. Or Syracuse or, or Onondaga County? Mm -hmm. Onondaga County. Onondaga County. Onondaga County. In both Oswego and Cayuga facilities, there are generators listed here. You'll notice from last fiscal year, we reduced the price of these generators. So they've come down to $75,000 a piece. They are carryover. Oneida County has four 35-foot diesel buses. That is a carryover from last fiscal year, also delayed due to the pandemic. There are service vehicles. There are two trucks that are going to be replaced, one in Rome, one in Utica and a supervisory vehicle in Utica. Those were projected in last fiscal year. However, we couldn't secure the funding for them. So we've moved them forward to this fiscal year. Any questions? What do you do with the bus on the replacement of this, um, the one that you replace? The, the buses? Yeah. We actually, we sell them. We put them up for auction and they go to public surplus. So they're open and available to people to bid on. You want to buy a bus? <laughs> <laughs> you could travel like around with family singing. We have rejoiced in about 12 years. <laughs> 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 Any other questions? Okay. The uh, three year projected. Is this spreadsheet available? projection I thought it would be good for you guys to see the actual breakout of the budget and what the plans are for the coming three years so in the first section of this spreadsheet you're going to see fiscal years 23 24 24 25 and 25 26 and these are the projects that are particularly listed for a specific year so 23 and 24 you'll notice we have both bus shelters and a service vehicle so those are the only two projects that are on the tip at this moment for that particular year. What's a, what's a TIF? TIF is the Transportation Improvement Program. Um, so what I do want to draw your attention to, however, if you can scroll down for me, Lynn, this is where we project our unfunded projects. So these are all the projects that are slated in a fiscal year that need to be done but have yet to secure their funding. So these particular projects will be paid for with state funding as that funding becomes available. You guys, do you want to walk through this list or just a quick oversight? There's a bunch listed here and they come off on an as needed, first come, first serve, most importantly, will come off those lists. And they are broken down by facility as well. So you have a priority to it? Yes. Yeah. So and we have one for each particular year. So you'll find here in fiscal year 26, we have listed out the Utica facility. So we have that projected at a $20 million project. Yet unfunded. On the previous page, there was a couple of RTC items. Mm -hmm. uh, like one of them was facility improvements. What's included there? I think. Change the 
Are you so, talking about the 1.55, Neil? Yes. So CNS engineers came through and did a full evaluation of the facility and provided us with a document of broken out of multiple items that need to be repaired or replaced at the facility. So that encompasses, I, mean, I can get you the full break. That'd be great. Is yeah. it mostly just state of good repair State of good stuff? repair. Um, then on the opposite side of that third, the platform is being evaluated right now by CNS. Um, they're doing a survey right now. We hope to get that shortly to see what will be required to either keep that in a state of good repair until New York State Rail decides what they're going to do or eventually we need to replace it ourselves. So that could be another potential eight to ten million dollar project if we need to replace that ourselves. Is that all on Central or is that all on us? It's if if just our platform, that would be all on us because that's our facility. But New York State Rail is talking about a second line on the opposite side, and that would be on them, and then they would be part of our hidden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's multiple moving pieces with it right now. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Operating budget, capital budget. I know we maximize as much as possible coming from the Fed and state before we get into any local dollars. I uh money here. With that being said, I need a motion to get to the full board for adoption for the capital. Darling, any questions? Second, Tina. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, moving into um, resolutions. Um, Caitlin's gonna talk to us about the uh, waiting shelters. So this is the resolution for passenger waiting shelters. This will be paid for with grant funding. And this is a, a little bit of an echo there. Mute yourself. <laughs> so this is paid with grant funding. It will be an 80 10 10 split between federal, state, and local dollars, respectively. So this invitation to bid was publicly let on October 14th. Eight bid packages were sent. Hold on a second, Marty. Can you mute yourself? Hey, Luella. Luella, if you can hear me, could you push mute on your phone? Thank you. I think. Kaylin. So we sent out eight bid packages, and we have requests for eight additional bid packages. On November 4th, we did receive two bids with the lowest responsive responsible bidder being Brasco International. They offered a price of $9,950 per shelter for the initial purchase of the 10 shelters. And as Tara mentioned in the capital budget, we do have an option to purchase 10 additional shelters. And the price for those would be $10,475. So it's my recommendation that the board award the passenger waiting shelters purchased to Brasco International. It's a nice um, swing between both vendors there. Yeah, yeah good job. Any, any questions on that? Is there a... I'm full of questions this morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, is the style dictated in the bid, or is it just an invitation to anything in Brasco's catalog? Yeah, we do have a very specific specification that we ask them to stick to. I should have known. We drive, we drive the spec always. We always drive it. Yeah, the shelters are custom built at the manufacturing facility. So is this only for... On a dark county, not Cayuga, Oswego, Rome. Well, the, ori the original ten are for on a dark county, but the, we have an option for six or ten additional, sorry, in six months that we could potentially for the other counties. So, this is a this is for the shelters, but who pours the pad? Our guys. Sorry. I believe these are just replacement shelters, so they're not they're not added. Gotcha. Um, if that's your question. But if there is a case where they add one, um, the well for the pad, make sure it's ADA compliant and then install the shelter. One question. When you get new shelters, you have to get approval for the city or the people around in order to get the city shelter. Okay. Um, funny you should mention that. <laughs> <laughs> 
so try to be nice about it. Yeah, we um, had a little bit of a back and forth with the state because um, we've never had to do that before. You know, so we had a shelter out in the, uh, Liverpool on Oswego Street that was taken down because of some construction that was done. In order to put it back, we've got to go through a permitting process with DOT. Um, but typically, no, the, the city doesn't require us to do that. Uh, the local municipalities don't require it. This is the first time we've had to do that. I really didn't want to set that precedent, but I lost that battle. Any other questions on the uh, shelters? Any questions? Um, motion for you to the full board. Neil, yeah. second. Tina, all in favor? Aye. Okay, Caitlin, please. Okay, Chris, you're welcome. So, um, this is Chris King's first presentation to the board. He started here in September of 2020. You told him we were rough, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, welcome, Chris. And uh, Chris can talk about Resolution 3C, Resolution to Authorize Contract Award for Mini Van and Stan Services, um, 2227. Chris. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. This resolution is for Minivan Incident Services B. This will be paid for using operating funds. The invitation for bid was publicly let on August 3rd. 21 bid packages were sent out, of which eight were sent to minority and women-owned business enterprises. Nine additional bid packages were requested. On August 24th, the lowest responsible and responsive bid was received by Blue Chip Transportation among the three bids received. There is currently a full waiver pending for MWBE participation with New York State Empire Development. Therefore, it is our recommendation that the board award for a full five-year period the contract for minivan incident services fee to Blue Chip Transportation. You see the annual increase there, folks? Mm -hmm. Yep. Any questions for Chris? Pretty straightforward. Good job with uh, gathering some good competitive bids. Um, we have a motion to bring it to the full board. Tina, second, Darlene, all in favor? Aye. Aye. To award contract, Blue Trip, Transportation, Chris, good job. Thank you. Okay. Tara's going to talk about uh, Resolution 3D, uh, Renewable Natural Gas Dispensing Program. Tara. Good morning again. We have been researching opportunities um, when it comes to renewable natural gas and we happen to find one where we can share in RIN credits. RIN credits are renewable identification numbers. So when you have individuals that are scrubbing methane that is coming from either a landfill or different locations, that can be scrubbed clean and pumped back into the compressed natural gas line. So when it goes back through that line, we can take credit for using that actual fuel. So we have a company, True Star, that is willing to share credits with us. So we are in for a 4% share of all of those credits, which are about <coughs> 19 cents for a gas gallon equivalent. So that comes out to about $171,000 a year based on our current usage. That could go up or down. Um, so we have an opportunity for $855,000 over a five-year period. So what we would like to do is enter into the contract for 12 months with four one-year options with them. So if it is advantageous and something that is worth our while, we can continue a contract for five years. Good. Impacts uh, fairly large. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Yep. Of stuff. A, a credit translates to a check from the federal government. A credit when we get a credit we buy the credit and then we get a check there's a there's another party that has the credits so what we're doing is we're right. sharing in those credits so they're going to be cutting the check to us but yes this is yes. backed by the federal government money coming in yes mm -hmm. yes it's good it's good um, any questions for Tara good way to think out of the box here for some revenue uh, motion to award contract to True Star Energy uh, for a year with uh, four year options. Uh, no, Robert, no. Second, Martin, all in favor? Uh, I'm not sorry, Julius. Julius, straight back. Julius, give me a second. Okay. Linda, what else do we have? 
Um, in your report, you also have your other supplemental information, the MRT statement, which, as you can see, was another million dollar month in October. You have your reserve statement, statement of borrowings, the cash flow, procurement summary, risk management summary, and your grant summary. Um, <clears throat> also included in your board report, and this is just for informational purposes only, um, we, every November, we usually have to submit um, to the New York State Division of Budget, also known as DOB, um, for inclusion in their 2020-23 executive budget. That's included in here. Uh, it's just a little bit different format than <coughs> our, our budget, but that also has to be submitted. So I've included that in the report for your review as well. Same numbers as I just presented to you, just in a different format. Um, also, we don't usually include this, but it is written to the Board of Directors. Uh, after we submit our annual um, National Transit Database report, there's a report from the auditors, which they, I've included in here. It's just the final accounts report um, for the National Transit Database report. Not for approval, just for your information. And that's concludes my report. Okay, very good, very informative. Um, good job, Linda, good job, team. I think there's a lot, of, a lot of work that goes into these types of budgets, um, but I think we, we do our due diligence at the board um, to make sure we have the right budget in place. Okay, let's take five and then we'll come back together for the uh, board meeting. Thank you.